Did you hear that? Listen. Sounds like some grease clogging a valve, maybe. If only we had the ear of Roy Ho to diagnose even these tiny troubles in an airplane engine. This pioneer of aviation mechanics was simply the best. That is, if you believed Charles Lindbergh. Lucky Lindy thrilled the world in 1927 with his solo transatlantic crossing, landing in Paris with gas left over after five men had died before him trying to do the same. Lindbergh first worked with Staff Sergeant Roy W. Ho when Ho was in charge of the detail of mechanics at Bowling Field in Washington, D.C. in 1928 as they were putting the spirit of St. Louis into shape for its non-stop flight to Mexico City. The impressed and very famous Colonel Lindbergh left this written message. Many thanks for your cooperation. It has been 100%. And please give my thanks to Staff Sergeant R.W. Ho for the excellent inspection he has given the spirit of St. Louis. From then on, whenever the famous Lindbergh touched down at Bowling Field, he wanted his man, Sergeant Ho, to go over the plane. So it's no surprise also that Roy Ho became a favorite mechanic of another famous aviatrix, Amelia Earhart. But Roy Ho is most famous for one flight that he was part of in 1929. So it was Roy Ho holding things together on the record-breaking flight of the Question Mark, a tri-motor Fokker craft which Roy and a small crew kept aloft with dozens of extremely dangerous mid-air refuelings for a total of 150 hours, even while the crew sent and received mail via the refueling planes. And it was dangerous. Roy or someone else had to reach out and catch a hose tossed from another plane and then they had to stick it into a gas tank and pump. He wrote in a letter published in the New York Times in January 1929, Everything is going good. I keep both ears on the ground, that's a wisecrack, all the time listening to the motors and they sound sweet. I told Major Spatz and the other officers about the rabbit foot and it was tied to the tail skid without their knowledge and you should have seen them laugh. Roy needed his rabbit's foot only when he had the nerves to climb out on a catwalk on the wing as the plane was flying at 70 to 90 miles per hour to repair a dying left engine. When the failure of this engine finally forced a landing of question mark January 7th at 2.07 p.m. at LA's Metropolitan Airport after 150 hours of airtime, the New York Times called this one of the great feats in aviation history. Now, of course, all the young officers, and Ho was a non-commissioned officer, mind you, took virtually all the limelight posing for photos in the New York Times and distributing their logs to the press, becoming instant celebrities. But Roy Ho's townsman noticed the oversight and corrected it, inviting him home for a hero's welcome. And Charles Fittinger, one of Roy's baseball chums, had hung a piece of canvas from the spirit of St. Louis in the window of his tobacco shop at what is now the old opera house. The town gave Roy Ho a gold watch. And his commanding officers on the question mark all went on to greater glory. But Roy returned to his hometown after the war to be chief of police in Charlestown. Even a relative of Roy Ho's once told me, I'd run a yellow light just to pester him. And when Roy Ho died April 18, 1972, Dignitaries and local townsmen turned out in strength at the funeral and the ceremonies he was later buried at Arlington National Cemetery. Well, now you know about Roy Ho, Charlestown's wizard of aviation mechanics. This one's for you, Roy. <laughs>